Welcome to Green One Day at a Time. It's time for the June allotment too. Beautiful weather for the past couple of days. Very sunny and very cool evenings. You can see the plants very happy. Some are rushing towards seeding and some are fruiting profusely. I love the way the grasses move in the wind. This is gooseberry. Loads of fruits this year, unlike the last two years. It should be a lot softer when they are ripe. These are the celery I planted last year. I am still harvesting from them. They are not very succulent leaves, but I still have harvested even today from that end. I am leaving the center stalk and then harvesting the rest around the plant. This is blackcurrants loaded with berries. I hope I get some this year. Last year I lost a lot to the birds. Big chunks of clusters of berries. This is another gooseberry which when I bought was labeled red currant. Never mind. It's fruiting really well. We love gooseberries. And these are my two rhubarb plants. I've harvested plenty of stalks from it since March and it's st it's still growing now under this covered green mesh is calabries you can see the little heads forming calabries and they are interplanted with beetroot so it's to save the space so you can see they are interplanted with beetroot and on the next half this half of the plot is cauliflower they are much smaller because i sowed them much later check under the leaves of all your brassicas to see if there is any caterpillar or eggs they are all these are also interplanted with beetroot again that's a sectional sowing of beetroot so they will look much smaller on this side of the bed is a big failure. It's pak choy. The bed is full of pak choy. They have all gone into seed and I didn't even get a chance to harvest even one leaf. This is because of this sudden, they didn't grow at all in May. And then suddenly when the weather heated up or warmed up, they shot to uh, seed. That's a butternut squash planted it only two or three days before so it looks quite sad and it'll pick up with the weather now this whole bed will be revamped i will remove everything and i i will plant it with something that will go with the butternut squash and also at the at the end there is a uh, kohlrabi so i will plant something which will go with kohlrabi and squash now these are pigeon damages so you can see the pigeons have been pecking on it. They look quite sad, but I have to cover it and then they will um, recoup back. So that's the plan for this bed. The whole thing will be removed and just the kohlrabi and the butternut squash will be left behind and something that will go with both will be planted in the middle. So there you go, my calibrus is covered. And this side on the white mesh is cauliflower with some black chickpeas in the cauliflower is the second sowing of cauliflower from the previous one and this uh, one has been eaten quite a lot by slugs and it's coming back and that's the size of the cauliflower it should be and these are looking very healthy they are chickpea plants I'm hoping to get some chickpeas this year uh, I will always keep them covered fearing cabbage white butterflies now that's a swiss chard plant from last year it's gone into seed i have to pull it out but it is very deep rooted so i'll be trying my best behind all this this looks like a forest of swiss chard but behind all that there is a honeyberry plant it did flower this year but i can't see any berries on it but it looks beautiful nevertheless with red stems and again, be, uh, find my, finding my way through the Swiss chard, there is goji berries. 
again this did not flower this year so i'm just hoping it may pick up next year probably and that's my strawberry bed plenty of strawberries we are picking 300 grams around 300 grams of strawberries every day and that's my potato bed so six rows of potatoes uh, they're doing good and at the end of the potato is supposed to be gherkins I, pl I did plant six gherkins to climb up the structure but now I can only see I can't see four of them I can only see two of them and the culprits are slugs so I have to protect these now that's my squash varieties there's plenty of different squashes in there including Indian Loki uh, courgettes and everything this is methi we've been harvesting it as and when we need and that's a round courgette all all the courgette, all the squashes are interplanted with spinach and swiss chard this beautiful looking flower is purple mosh too and i'm looking forward to picking them and eating them fresh it's not yet covered with flowers but then it has started this is same on this side on a different structure and these are brussels sprouts now look at the way the leaves have been damaged these are pigeons the culprits are pigeons so i have to cover these so if i don't cover them now the pigeons will eat all of the leaves and they will not come back the plant will die now the brussels sprouts bed is interplanted with golden yellow beetroot so they are fully interplanted, uh, sown with beetroot. I will do the same with that bed at the end. I'll remove all the weeds and everything and more Brussels sprouts and beetroot will go there. Now these are my pride joy, pride joy, broad beans. They have started to get black fly, black aphid attack. A way to prevent the black aphid is to pinch off the tips of the plant and then eat those tips just like any pea shoots uh, just break them off from them and then the, they will not be attracted but since mine has already started to get infected I will spray them with soap water and there it's forming the beans are forming you have to wait for them to grow a lot more bigger and under this green mesh is purple sprouting broccoli interplanted with more beetroot this time it is cylindrica beetroot the purple sprouting broccolis are again a firm favorite of pigeons and also of all the cabbage white butterflies they will be attacked by all of those shallots and carrots are suffering massively don't know why this year my carrots have sprout uh, germinated very sporadically and the hot scorching sun has dried up my shallot leaves so i don't know whether it will survive tomato bed there are so many different types of tomatoes they are interplanted with jerry uh, marigolds french marigolds african marigolds the white one is african marigold parsley and also carrots there's more parsley there so these are the companion plants for tomatoes so always look closely with your tomato plant and pinch off the side shoots the carrots are in the center there so when the tomatoes are finished i can pull them out without disturbing the carrot and that's a russian giant sunflower that's a, uh, this one is a russian giant it will grow really tall so i've kept it in the center this is another big failure chinese cabbage i had planted these in march and they were doing really well they were uh, growing loads of leaves and then the slug attack they ate all the leaves left the center stalk and then when june appeared and the weather warmed up the plant shot to seed so i didn't even get a chance to harvest even one leaf so eventually today i've pulled them all out and in its bed i will be planting more indian mooli along with some uh, spring onions and this is a perennial wild rocket this is the third year the plant is coming up 
I'm very happy with it. Last year I ate loads of leaves from it and I'm still hoping to get more. This is the parsnip and spring onion bed. This was the lemon balm bed. So that's a lemon balm plant we've left behind. The problem was we weren't using that much of lemon balm and the whole bed was covered in lemon and it was spreading. So we've removed it, we've planted it with parsnips and indisone it with spring onions. This is the French run uh, not runner beans, French beans bed and it has got potatoes, sell, uh, voluntary potatoes. I didn't pull them out, I'm letting them grow and at the end in the uh, structure we have got sweet peas and runner beans so the sweet pea and the runner sweet pea has started to flower it's beautifully beautiful colors in fact it's a mixed color one so it, I, i'm hoping i don't know what all colors will turn out right now there's purple and there is red now in this empty spot I'm going to sow some methi. So these are methi seeds which I soaked them for a night and let them sprout for a day. So I've removed a couple of inches of uh, soil from the top and just sprinkled them, broadcasted them and now I'm going to cover them. Um, and so that's it. So they will grow from there. So we, uh, this is the method that I found to work for me so I've tried sowing the seeds straight away and it didn't work for me so this time I'm trying them with sprouts so it is working that way so that's lettuce simple heartless lettuce and two lolo, lolo rosas um, they are yet to be attacked by slugs so I'm keeping a close eye this is the turnip bed so they are starting to form. The turnips have started to form. So this, this is the first sowing and that's the second sowing. So the plants will look significantly different in size. They are in the zone with uh, coriander, but I can't see any coriander. So I have to sow them again. I keep them covered because of flea beetle. Now there's more Swiss chard, self-sown Swiss chard, which is going into seeds. So I have to remove this. Behind that is oka. I'm growing okras entire because they are notorious to sprout back again in the same spot so this way I can control them where they go and this is chives that look at the flowers so beautiful and bees love chive flowers this is an aronica berry also uh, this was planted along with the honey berry and the goji berry and that's this one has at least got some berries on it now in the three tires on the side of the greenhouse have got blueberries uh they fruit in different times that's my baby lettuce mix container very crispy leaves not just popular with us but also with slugs so i have to be very careful when i pinch the leaves this is the red leaf basil and this is the sweet basil now the greenhouse is filled with different kinds of tomatoes so i don't know what variety that is the previous one was black cherry and out of the nine okra plants i planted i've only left this one behind everything else was pulled out now this side fully is tomato that's fully chili so different kinds of chilies uh, and that is a yellow lemon apple Le lemon yeah lemon apple cucumber so it is a round cucumber and these four are different varieties of aubergine so there is money maker there is black beauty there is a white one and there's a purple one uh, so that's the white one and that is an indian snow pea and it has started to fruit it's one of my favorites in the pea family this is a sweet potato i'm going to try it inside the greenhouse let's see where it could be Behind the greenhouse, I've got four sacks with potatoes. I can't remember the variety of the potato, but these are four sacks of the same kind of potatoes. Now, moving to the end of the allotment, we've got this structure built in uh, for climbers, and either side of the structure is planted with 
gladioli at this end i have got some chow chow or chayote in a bucket and on the other end this end i have planted some cucumelons in the bucket so i'm hoping they will climb towards the structure and start spreading over there both are climbers both the both these plants are climbers so l in in between of all the gladioli i've got malaba spinach it is also climbing spinach so again i'm hoping this will climb over the structure on this side of the structure i have got my sweet corn baby corn on this side along with some climbing beans and sweet corn on that side with some purple powdered climbing beans so those are the stepping stones to walk through and at the ends i have got white pumpkins these two are white pumpkins and on that end this end i've got another pumpkin I, uh, this was given to me so i don't know whether it is an orange pumpkin or any other type so this has already started to fruit so you can see the fruit at the end here when you look at the pumpkin or squash plants if you can see a very small fruit at the end of the flower then like that then it is a uh, female flower if it has not got any fruit at the end of the flower then it is a male flower but the plant needs both flowers to be pollinated this is a squash a winter squash uchi ki curry or curry i am not sure but i'm thinking this is a climber not sure if it is a climber then i will let it climb up the structure then towards the end this is jerusalem artichoke inters intersown with radish so these tall ones are jerusalem artichokes they are in the sunflower family so the plants will be really tall now we've been munching through all the radishes from this end so that is why it looks quite empty and towards the end, we still have got more radishes to pick so you can see those uh, little colorful rounds at the end so we still got loads to pick so that's the allotment in june very busy the weather warmed up so quickly that now we are rushing to plant all the plants outside and all the seedlings outside hope you enjoyed this video stay safe and see you soon with another one